All right, I guess we're going to go ahead and get started. Hello and welcome to Adobe InDesign Creative Book. My name is Caitlin Tips, and I will be assisted today by my chat facilitators, uh, Matthew and Hannah. You guys want to say hi? Hello. Hi there. So today we are actually going to go over the fundamentals of creating a book in Adobe InDesign. So what this looks like is we obviously have Adobe InDesign. If you're not familiar with this, this is the industry standard publishing application for print and digital media. It allows ease of access for page layout and web design. And it's useful for not just books, but also flyers, magazines, newspapers, interactive PDFs, and more. And if you don't have access to Adobe InDesign, you can actually make a computer appointment at the Haggard or Davis location to uh, use your library resources and get free access to Adobe. Also, if you aren't able to do that, uh, Microsoft Word and other softwares like Coral Draw are also still usable. Um, but I would I would highly recommend um, at least trying the free tutorial free trial download of Adobe InDesign for all your layout needs, uh, just because Adobe InDesign files and PDFs are a much more stable document in terms of sending it over the internet um, so that file types don't get broken, links and such. It's just a, it's a much more stable file. So in terms of designing our, our book, formatting it, where do we start? Well. First and foremost, you have to have your content. Uh, you have to have your book. And that means um, you've written it either by hand, you've got it in a Microsoft Word document, anything like that. It's like you've got this and you've decided that you're going either the self-publishing route or you're going to send it off to a president to a, a publisher. Um, and that plays into how you decide you want to present it. So your presence presentation style for your book that we're designing today is going to be um, built upon these fundamentals that we're going to go over. So self-publishing versus publishing houses. Um, one thing to, to kind of be aware of is that self-publishing means that you're going to go through a third party printer, most likely, and you'll pay for all of that costs yourself. Um, that means you need to be aware of your output. So everything we do today, it's with that end goal in mind. That our goal is to print a book. Um, I, I will cover um, some of the basics of what that looks like. Um, I will not be getting into digital publishing at this time. Um, that may come later in a more advanced course. So other topics that we're going to cover today will be just the basics of setting up your document, what those margins mean uh, margins should look like what your facing pages um, should look like, number of pages, etc. And I'm going to talk a lot about imposition if you're going to go the route of self-publishing, uh, just because that's a very uh, important feature for how you set up your document. And it's important to understand how it works and when to use it. Um, also, master pages. It's the building blocks of your book because it makes your life a lot easier. Um, this will include just kind of going over how to have consistency for your text placement, your page numbering, um, and a lot of other really fun features. I'm also going to show you a little bit of that presence, presentation style that I mentioned earlier, which um, is a drop cap. That adds a lot of flair to your document. It can also make you look more professional um, when you're going to print. And then I'm going to go over a brief overview of book files, how they're useful and how they're not. Okay. So with that in mind, we're going to jump into Adobe InDesign. But before I do that, do we have any questions? Um, we're just covering some of the you know, computer appointment basic questions in chat. So nothing yet, but I will happily interrupt you as soon as we get some. Very cool. So um, some key tools for InDesign. 
before we do um, shift gears is we do I, the Java. Sorry. The direct selection tool, which is this black arrow, the type tool, and the frame tool. These are kind of the building blocks of all documents that you build in the software. And it's important to kind of know what, what your building blocks are, your fundamentals, because you will rinse and repeat a lot in this software. Okay. So we are now in Adobe InDesign, and we're going to go over from the very beginning how to create a new document. So there's a couple different ways to do this. You can see over here we have Create New. That is one way we can do it. We can also go up to File up in the top left-hand corner, click and go to New, and you have New Document, Book, or Library. Now in our case, we're just going to do a document. Um, starting with the book function is actually more advanced than we're going to cover today, but uh, feel free to ask questions if you if you have any. All right, so we have this new window that pops up and it's going to automatically populate from recent documents that you have had. Um, but along the top, we also have saved templates. We also have print, web and mobile. So as I mentioned, InDesign is a very diverse software, but again, we're creating a book and our output is going to be for print. So you can view all presets and see that there's a lot of different options here. However, um, we're in the States and our most common paper size is going to be eight and a half by 11. But I do want to note that this is where it's important to know what route you're going to take. If you're just going to send this off to a publisher, then do a standard letter size uh, page setup um, because they're probably going to have their pre-press department mess with it. Um, but it's good to have a good presentation style to kind of get your foot off right. Um, but if you're going to go the route of self-publishing, then it's important to know um, what what company you're going to go with because each printing house has different recommendations for how they want their pages set up. Um, they, they may still have you select the letter size, um, but that's where all these features over here on the right kind of come into play. So these preset details, first and foremost, we're going to change our title from Untitled 1 to either the title of your book or you can just do book example and then we have our measurements here now if you're using InDesign for the first time your units may have opened up in a different measurement it may be millimeters it may be centimeters um, it might even be points however you can change that by clicking that down arrow and clicking inches and underneath that we have orientation. So again, depending on the type of book that you're wanting to create, it's important to know um, what direction do you want it to go? Do you want it to be portrait or landscape? Right now today, we're just gonna focus on portrait. We're gonna go for a standard textbook and facing pages. So facing pages is an option that allows for two pages to be shown side by side, aka a spread. Um, and this is used for documents that will be print or bound. And what I mean by that is, again, everything I say in today's class is going to go back to that output, that um, final print product. Because um, when you print, when you bind, you have to have space for that binding. Um, so in this case, that's going to affect how our margins are set up. That's how we're going to have our column getter if we wanted to have columns. Um, and if we scroll down even, that would affect our bleed and slug. Um, but let's go back up to the top and work our way down. So I do have a question for you if you have a moment. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's fine. Let's do it. What's the All question? All right. <laughs> um, is this the only opportunity where you can 
adjust these parameters is whenever you are creating the document or are you able to go back and change those settings as you go or later? You can definitely adjust as you go on. This is not the end all be all. Perfect. This is just kind of setting the stage, getting your foot off on the right track. Um, and in fact, just to kind of show you that works. Um, we're going to say that for our book, we have 100 pages already set and ready to go. Um, and yes, we do want to start at one. And we don't have to worry about columns today. And margins, half an inch is fine. Um, because again, we, we're not working with specific print um, printing guides, but that could be less or more. Um, and right here, this link here that you see here and here, um, if you click off of that, it breaks. And if you click it again and you adjust something up, they all change. If you do this, if you click one more time and it breaks, it's all different, um, but it's very easy to fix. And your bleed right here, um, we'll go ahead and add one to this document, even though it's not necess necessary. Um, we will increase that to about a quarter of an inch. And as you can see, I clicked preview. And let's see if I can't move this to show you. It creates a red boundary around your original page. If you had an image that was going to be, be printed all the way to the edge of your, your document. Uh, this is communicating to your printer that um, the page that they are actually going to print on is about a quarter of an inch larger and then they would cut it down to your desired page size so you get that um, clean edge for your print. So that's actually mostly useful for your cover page if you're going to create your own title cover. But the question was how do we um, adjust this after the fact? So we're going to go ahead and click create. We have our pages over here. But let's just say that I don't like my margins. I can actually go right back up to your menu right along here of your workspace. And if you go down to document setup, this window pops up again and you can adjust your orientation, your margins, bleed and slug, number of pages, if they're facing pages, that whole shebang. Does that answer the question? I believe so. I will let you know otherwise. Sweet. Excellent. That is a great question. Um, kind of tied into that as well. If you're going to be working in Adobe InDesign more and you don't want to have to adjust your measurement or other features a bunch all the time, you can go over here to edit and go all the way down to preferences and go up to units and increments. And even if you click any one of these, it's gonna bring up the same uh, new window. So even if we had clicked general, we could have gone down here to units and increments in this new window. And you can actually change what your preset measurement unit is. So it makes life a lot easier in that sense. If you know you're gonna be working in it a lot and you don't want to rip repeatedly uh, have to change that unit of measurement. Or if you're just like me and not used to seeing everything in centimeters or millimeters. Okay. So we have our document set up, but uh, before we go too, too much further, um, I do want to kind of go over and position just briefly to tell and why it's important. And it goes back to, again, that final output and your choice of printer. Um, imposition is something that nowadays can be done with the software or it's even done in-house by the printer service that you select. Um, but some of them will require that you do imposition yourself. And so what imposition is, is in fact, a printing concept referring to pre-press page arrangement 
It arranges the product pages to the printer's larger sheets to increase printing speed, simplify binding, and reduce paper waste. Um, and what that actually is, is it takes anywhere from eight to 16 pages and prints it on a larger sheet of paper. Um, and then they will cut that down and fold it to get the correct binding and page arrangement. So your document set up with your pages may not in fact go one. So if you can see right here in the pages panel, it may not go one, two, three, four, five. It may go, um, if we have 100 pages, it may go 100, 1, 99, 2, um, 98, 3, et cetera, so forth and such way. Um, I'll like to reach the last number in the middle at the bottom of our document rather than just in order. Again, that's a little bit more complicated, but that's why it's very important to know who you're going to print with, who um, you're going to go with because it changes the arrangement of your entire document. And it's not necessarily something you want to have to do halfway through your uh, book setup. So that out of the way, though, we're just going to assume that our printer is going to do that for us and we're not going to worry about it. Um, so additional setup that we can do straight straight away here is if we go up to view, we can then go down to display performance and make sure that that high quality display is check marked. And that is because we want everything that we're putting into our book to be the highest quality possible. Um, that will impact how our export is at the very end um, or how we save a document. Because you don't, you don't want anything to look blurry or not as crisp as possible when you do the printing. Okay. Another aspect of our project here is up here in the right hand corner, we, you, you can see that I'm hovering over Essentials Classic. This is your workspace switcher. If you click that down arrow, you will see that there are more options that pop up. And Adobe InDesign tries to help you out by curating um, features that they think you'll need depending on the project type that you're working on. So you can see that there is one for book. However, this is more advanced than what we currently need. And it's not, in my opinion, a, a very comfortable way of viewing your document because um, this is assuming that you are already working in a book file. And so it has some things that you don't need, some things you do need. Um, but again, it's very cluttered in my opinion and has more or less um, panels that you don't really need at this point if you're just getting started. Um, but um, I would recommend working in either Essentials or Essentials Classic to start. Essentials is going to put everything over here in your right-hand panel. However, if you're like me and you've been trained by Microsoft Word, we're going to switch over to Essentials Classic. And what this does is it puts everything, all your panels listed on the right-hand side again, but also depending on the tool that you have selected. So I'm going to select the type tool over on the left. And that's going to change the function of the ribbon along the top. And that's just a lot more comfortable for me in terms of viewing um, because I'm already used to this from other softwares that I've used. Okay. So what do we do now? Where do we go? Well, we go back to our content. So this is a great time to go ahead and get started by adding things on the page. And you can do a mock setup. You can add text boxes. You can um, 
decide what style you want for font. Um, all of these things happen, but first and foremost, you have to get things on the page. So you can do this either with your frame tool or even with type tool. You can click along that pink line, which is marking your margin. You can click and drag to have the entirety of the page filled up. And as you can see, I now have a cursor in that top corner ready for me to type. But let's also say that I am ready to, I have a document that has all of my book already typed up rather than having to copy and paste into this document, I can actually do um, file place. So InDes InDesign does not have an insert function. Instead, you place text or you place graphics. Um, and this is actually linking your content directly in here and it retains the original um, files integrity. So anytime you are placing items into the document, this panel right over here on the right, the links, you will see that pop up and list here. So we're going to go ahead and do either control D or, so control D will pull up the place menu or you can do file, go down to place. Lynn, I actually had a question, um, just me. <laughs> yeah. So if you're, so you're talking about how it's linking material. So from what I understand, you would want your source material, your images, whatever you're putting in your InDesign document to mm -hmm. be in the same folder, like don't move it, don't delete from it. Is that a correct assumption? Absolutely. And you read my mind because I was about to mention that next. Oh, perfect. Okay. Thank so, you. No, great lead in. Great question. Um, Whenever I start a new InDesign project, I usually I create a new folder on my desktop and I label it that project. And within that, I will have my original file and then I will have another folder labeled links. And in that is Im any images or any text files that I'm linking into the document. Does that make sense? That does to me. <laughs> Sweet. Um, do, do, do. I think. Do, do, do. Oh, this is embarrassing. I think I forgot to download my uh, lorem ipsum file, which is um, if any of you guys know what lorem ipsum is, it's a Latin text, and it is a traditional placeholder text. Um, since I do not have a book written uh, at the ready, I'll have that downloaded in two, two seconds, two seconds. I'll chime in with a... Um computer usage tip if you do choose to go to Haggard or Davis Library and um, use our Adobe computer at either of those locations. You're going to want to bring a flash drive or a USB device and work from that only because any work that is saved on our public computers will be deleted once we reset those computers. It's great for, um, you know, patron privacy, but save your stuff to your USB device and work from there and save all your linked images from your USB device. Because otherwise, um, as soon as you log off of that computer and it resets, all of your work will go away. So just a word of caution. That is a great reminder, Hannah. And I appreciate because now we are going to do file place. We're gonna try that again. And there it is. All right. So as you can see, I now have all of this lovely text that I didn't have to spend hours and hours of typing. You can find uh, lorem ipsum 
um, generators online for free, and you can actually specify it to do as many paragraphs as you need. Um, it's really great if you're just wanting to mess around and learn some of the basics in, in design uh, without worrying about your content or messing up anything um, by accidentally uh, saving or overwriting it. Um, so again, it's just a really great way to um, kind of help yourself out. All right, but a fun thing to note is on our screen here, at the bottom of my text box is I now have a red arrow with a plus in it. And this is actually going to help us out a ton as we create our book. Before we jump into that though, um, I do want to jump back up into master pages. because master pages are going to allow us to have a consistent style with our documents, with our um, sorry. Uh, yes, it allows quick application for all of our items in our in our book, um, for our page numbers, our logos, headers or footers, or if we need to make a quick change and affect it to all our, our pages in our document, master pages is the way to go. So up here under pages, you'll see a master and none. So right now the a master is applied to everything, but if I double click either side of my a master, there's nothing on there. So nothing is really being affected. So to add anything on there, you're going to do it just like you would on any other page. But let's start with page numbers. Um, I do have in um, a handout that I created for this class, an overview of master pages and how to create a new master page. And then I have included a couple different methods on page numbering. There's no oh. one right way to do this. Um, and it's really, it's about knowing again where it's going to be. Before we move on, uh, we did have a question in chat. Um, mm -hmm. Since you are pulling your content into InDesign, any changes would be saved here, all right? Not the original document you pulled from. So basically they're asking if you edit something here, does it edit it in the original document? No. Um, no, the only time that is different is when you're working in book files. Um, but when you're just placing text in an uh, InDesign document, no, it does not change. Like, <clears throat> excuse me, for example, if, you're, um, if your text is from a Word document, like what I am uh, imported, then no, it will not affect that original file because it's a different file type. Um, so it's a great way to, again, um, retain your original quality without uh, worrying about that. Um, does that make sense? They seem to agree. Wait, it's a good question. Um, no, so linking linking text, linking graphics does not impact the original quality. Um, instead, you're pulling from that file uh, into this document and any changes that you make after that um, are only in this. So going back to master pages, if we are inserting page numbers, then it's important to kind of know uh, what page you're starting on? Do you want a page number on that? Do you want it to affect everything? Um, and also, because this is a facing page spread, we have a left and right side. Uh, but there are easy ways to do that. So we are going to drag our type tool. We're going to go over here to our panel, select that tool again, and normally, 
uh, page numbers are in the lower corner. Again, you want to always check your margins uh, because you may find that you need that there or you may find that you need it at the margins. Again, it just depends on your printer. So a fun thing we can do then is go up to type mm -hmm. and we can in fact insert special character and we can go to markers and then we have all of these page options. So, but first what we're going to do is I'm going to type an A there, I'm going to highlight, we're going to go back up to type. And do, do, do. so now when we go back here, we have a look of page one. But that only affected the right hand side of our pages. So what we will actually need to do is go back up here to our master page and adjust that so it's not quite on the margin line. You can actually make that smaller. And then we're going to click the left hand side and we're going to go to our type tool again. And we're gonna make another box right there. And we're gonna go ahead and type B, because again, this is a book with facing pages. We're going to line that up there. So the beautiful thing about InDesign is that even though there's a lot of things we can do by hand, um, there's a lot of things InDesign may, helps us not have to do. So I want to make sure that my page numbers, regardless of A, uh, left hand, right hand side are even. I'm going to go to a line over here on my panel, and I'm just going to make sure that they are centered and that they're kind of how they're supposed to be. I don't want one to be really wonky on one side and the other, and it's easy enough if I can't um, if I can just make sure that they're lined up. Okay, so it looks like the only difference I may have to make is, is the size of my text box to get that aligned exactly where I want it. A question for you, Caitlin. Yep. Uh, let's see. Would you just be able to copy and paste the other pages texts so that the size is the same or does InDesign have like a kind of default copy paste setting that it uses? Ah, okay. Um, is that in, in reference to the overset text, the red plus symbol that I mentioned? Let me wait for a response to that. Nothing. Uh, let's see. Uh, it's in reference to the page number. Okay. Um, I'm not sure I understand. So um, do you mean when you're importing text from a Word document, if you already have page numbers there, will it include that? Um, they just said instead of creating a new B, since you created A and then you created a new B from scratch, um, why mm -hmm. not just copy paste A so it's the same size? Ah, well, the, the good thing about A right here is that page, that text is lined up with that corner. Um, the problem with B here is that I'm doing the opposite. It's a reflection. So I can't really get an exact placement of that B aligned with that corner. So I, I understand what they mean about copy and paste now, um, but and you could do that, but you would still end up kind of maneuvering it a little bit just to make sure you had it aligned with the text itself in that box. Does that make sense? Let me see what they say. 
But I, I, I think I kind of get it a little bit better that reflection is, is definitely, you want to make sure it's all aligned. Um, yes. Perfectly. Let's see. Um, um, they did have a response. Let's see. But it also, sometimes when you're doing uh, your A versus B, um, like right then I was finding it hard to get it to like that page. So what I'm actually going to do is add another B master. And on that left hand side, I'm going to go ahead and add a new text box for that page because it doesn't seem to want to communicate with the other side. And so I'm going to type B again. And this is, again, there's no one way to do these. Go back up here. Markers. Again, it's not quite liking that. It's kind of being a jerk. I have a follow-up question if you have okay. a moment. Yeah. Okay, so would you um, write justify the text in B so it lines up with that corner um, perfectly or is it still gonna be left justify? So I'm just wondering about oh. that um, left-hand page versus right-hand page alignment. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you can change your justification here. You can change it like so. And look, it does line up. It just depends on, again, um, how you're wanting to do it. There's, again, there's a million different ways to do it. Um, if you weren't concerned about the, ju the justification, you could easily just um, play with the size of your text box and kind of adjust from there. But doo -doo -doo, there we go going to do next page number. Yep, that seems to have helped. Thanks. Okay. All right. So whenever you create a new master and you're applying it to different pages, you will click from that master um, and see, look, it says A, B. Um, do, do, do but I didn't want my B there. I wanted B on this side. So. Anywho. Million different ways to do this. Just to kind of try out for funsies, we're gonna make sure I didn't forget something. There we go. Okay. Aha. So even I can make mistakes. I figured out what I did wrong at the start was I, the last time I did page numbers, I had to do um, different letters for each side of the page. Seems like that's no longer the case with InDesign. And this is the new 2020 version. So it must be an update that I missed. My apologies. Um, however, moving on, you can see that each of our pages now have a lovely, lovely text number. Okay, moving on. However, let's go back to our page one. 
and we're going to get to our text and we see that we have placed in our document and it's definitely more than one page and so we have that red plus sign. So what we're going to do is actually with our direct selection tool right up here is we're going to click that red plus sign and it should load that text. So your cursor should have text behind it now. And then we are going to, you can either click page two or you can scroll down in your document, whichever one works best for you. And in the upper um, left-hand corner, you can either click or you can create a new frame. I'm just going to click and it automatically loads that next text to fill the page. And you can literally do that for each new page that you have in your document, which makes it a lot easier than having to go up and file place. It also means that you're linking your text boxes correctly. Um, and that's what you're gonna do probably for the next couple of minutes is just click that red plus sign and you're gonna load everything. Now, another way you could do this is by going to your text tool or even your rectangle frame tool whichever you like, you can go ahead and create those text boxes right here. Click and drag. If you don't like it, you can adjust that frame with your black arrow. That's a, an important feature to note is that if you are still in one tool, you want to make sure that it is the tool you are looking for because if you're in your text tool and you click and you drag, and you want to adjust that frame and you click off of it and drag, you're just going to create another text box. So rinsing and repeating is a very important concept, but we're going to go back. We're going to create another one here just so I can show you another way of transferring your text from one page to the other without having to just rely on preset settings. So we're going to click that red arrow that red plus sign again and we're just going to click in that box and as you can see I didn't have to go up to the top of the page I just had to click on that text box and it filled and then we'll do the next I'll click down here did it again and that's what we'll do just to keep it going any questions about that, about linking text frames? There is one, let me see here. Mm -hmm. So do you click the red box and then drop to the new page? Is that what the process is? So you don't have to click and hold. Um, you're literally, you're clicking that red plus sign, that red box, and then it's going to be there. You, you can move your cursor around, you can switch tools um, because if, even if you unintentionally do something and it cancels it out, well, your red, uh, your red plus box is still there. You're never gonna lose your place and design's going to remember where you left off. And then you just click where you're wanting to place it again. So the red plus sign acts as another place tool without having to go to file place, essentially. Does that make sense? So I guess if you wanna say drag and drop, you can say drag and drop, but it's not really, you're not holding. You're clicking to pick it up and then you're clicking to set it down. I have another question. Um, mm -hmm. Looks like that answer did work for that patron. Um, hey. This other patron asked, I'm curious, are there people who write a book in the design tool or only use it to make the content pretty once it's already complete? Um, I kind of thought you would write the book inside of InDesign. Ah, you can if you really want to. Um, there are features in InDesign that uh, will allow you to type. You can still check your spelling. You can um, set your styles at the get-go and work your way in that. Um, from my experience, it's, it's a lot easier to just type it up in Microsoft Word 
and get all your uh, spelling errors, uh, formatting issues like with in terms of paragraphs figured out and then to import it into InDesign. Um, Cause I wouldn't say that this is just about making it pretty. It's about making it functional. Um, InDesign does have a lot more options for font, for um, aligning, um, wrapping text around images, um, having consistent styles because something I was going to get into a little later, but over here in my panel, you can see I have paragraph styles, I have char character styles and object styles. Um, InDesign is a formatting powerhouse. Um, can you, can you write in InDesign? Absolutely. Write in whatever software you are most comfortable with is my, my feeling. Um, but I, I, because I like to do my formatting all in one go, if you're going to write in InDesign, I wouldn't worry about formatting until you're done writing. Does that make sense? Oh, let's see here. Yes, that does make sense. Uh, good to know there are options. Absolutely. All the options. Okay. So these are really good questions. Um, it's a lot to figure out at the start. Um, so we're going to go back up to our first page and I want to teach you guys something fun um, with formatting here more than just loading in your content and setting up your pages. Um, but most starts of chapters have um, have what is known as a drop cap, and that's also known as an initial, but it's the letter at the start of a word, chapter, or paragraph that is larger than the rest of your text. So in order to create that, there's three different ways you can do that. There's what is known as the text wrap method. So that's where you highlight the letter. You go back up to that type menu at the top of your workspace and you're actually going to create outline and what you're doing there is you're actually converting your text to an object so if you do control plus or you zoom in and you select that first letter seems like i need to zoom in a little bit more See, I now have an outline for that first letter and I can actually click shift and drag and resize that. And what I can do after that is actually go over here to text wrap. And if it's not in your panels, again, that's something you'll find under window and text wrap is listed right there. And you can change the settings for the, for the drop cap. So I, like to have it on all sides. And look at that, we have a drop cap. Uh, that's one method for doing that. It seems easy, but I actually prefer another math method. So we're going to go to the second paragraph here. And with the O, we are actually going to do the paragraph panel method which I have that one open right here. And again, that is under window, all your panels, all the different options, and another way to arrange your workspace, all right there. And paragraph is going to be under type and tables. So we are going to select paragraph. And under paragraph, we have two options here for drop cap number of lines. So we're going to highlight that O and then I'm going to say that I want three lines. It automatically does it and you don't have to worry about changing this to be an object and then worrying about its alignment or how much of the text wrap you're giving, giving the um, first initial of your letter. And even if you wanted to do something like the first word even of your chapter or section, you would just highlight that. The drop cap option next to it is one or more characters. 
can highlight that for the entire word. It's probably too many characters. And then you'd increase your lines and look, you have the entirety of the first word. And you can do that as large, as deep as you like. Um, again, it just kind of fits into what style you're going for, what presentation style you're going for. Um, I would say a drop cap works for pretty much anything. A first word uh, might fit better in a story. And we haven't really messed too much with font, but the more ornate your font is, the more I would recommend going for a single drop cap letter rather than a word. Um, there is one more method on creating a drop cap, and that's the creation of a style. It's going to build off of this paragraph panel. So our paragraph styles panel, uh, which again, I have already saved over on the right, but it's accessed again window, you go to styles and you open paragraph styles. And these are pre-saved. So if you're doing a book, I would highly recommend that for your text, for your drop caps, any sections that you have, that you go ahead and create a paragraph style. Um, because they're preset, you don't have to worry about remembering exactly what font choice you chose for that setting, or what size you decided on, or how many lines you wanted for the drop cap. Um, InDesign will remember it for you by um, just going here, create new style, and what you'll do is double click that. It'll open a new uh, screen for paragraph style options. And again, under here, you will see a lot of different options. So this is more than just a drop cap. This can be used for your indents. This can be used for characters that you choose, um, your justification settings for your text uh, in case you wanted one side of your document um, more on the right side. Um, it, it goes on and on. But we're, we're concerned with drop caps right now. So as you can see, it kind of presets to three lines, one character. It's not based on any other character style that we have. Um, so if we had um, a font chosen specifically for drop caps, you could actually build it uh, upon another style. All right, so three and one sounds good to me. We're gonna go ahead and click OK. And then we're gonna go ahead and highlight that C and we're gonna apply that new paragraph style. And if you just click it, you can also rename it. So we're gonna name that drop cap. And that's just, that's a fun way to um, add a standard publishing practice, a publishing feature um, to your book. So speaking of uh, adding things to the book, we actually have a question in chat uh, about uh, uh, placing in hand-drawn art for the book, how they go about doing that. So the same way that you would do text, um, except I would add that it's probably going to help you to go to the rectangle frame tool. And so say you were inserting this on a page as an illustration, you could do that for an entire page, or you could insert it as, um, an image in the middle of the page. So I'll do both. So you can draw it right there, and then you would do your Control D or File Place, and then you would add in, um, I'll just use an example from my handout, and then File Place, and your graphic is right there. Um, that kind of gets into display settings, fitting settings. Um, I do include a brief overview of that in the handout, um, but that's also where you would get into text wrap and you would want to make sure you text wrapped around that and had at least at minimum a 0 0.0625 uh, because you do want some space around any images you put into text. So that's one way to go about it. Now, if you were wanting to um, add content in the middle of a book 
to just have um, examples of illustration or to illustrate anything, or if your book was entirely images, then again, you would just use that rectangle frame tool. You can draw either the size of the page, whatever works, control D and choose an image. Again, I'm just using stuff from my handouts that I already made and to get the, the best quality, um, I'd want to adjust the display settings, the fitting settings, and I would also want to make sure that I go back to the direct selection tool to do so. So you can right click, go to fitting in that menu, and you can fill frame proportionally, fit content proportionally, uh, fit frame to content or fit content to frame. Um, I, I personally prefer fit content proportionally to start. It shows me what InDesign thinks is the best scale of that image. So if you have a hand-drawn illustration for your book, you could easily insert it and have it as a standalone page. You could even add a caption underneath. Um, if, you, if you decided that you liked the quality that that import gave you, you could then right click it, do fitting again, and fit frame to content so you don't have to adjust with your black arrow tip tool around that. That's when you could then add a text box underneath. You could change it to, let's see, I want an italic font. So anything here with an arrow, yeah, I'm going to do a light italic and I'm just going to say figure one illustration example. And then you could actually save that as another paragraph style. So if you had multiple images, um, you could have that kind of pre-saved. You could also select that object, go to object styles, save it as a new object style. And if you're doing any kind of text wrapped around it, you could adjust the rules for that. That's a little bit more advanced than what I had planned to get into today. But it's a very good question because um, illustrations are becoming more and more common in books uh, as people look to enjoy different mediums all in one. Uh, so good question. Does that kind of get you started? I'll let you know if they respond in chat. Um, we have one minute left in this program for any final remarks or questions. Um, please do so now. I will mention that today we covered a lot of basics. So this should hopefully um, get you started. And uh, if you decide that you want to know more, we should be offering an advanced um, version of this class going into the more of the details, the fine tuning of creating your book in InDesign, uh, hopefully in September. So for that class, we would plan on going over book files, which we didn't really touch on today, but um, Book files are really great when you're working with multiple chapters and it creates more organization for your document. All right, we're getting some thank yous and looking forward to that in chat. Um, hey. awesome. Thank you to everyone for being here. Yeah, thanks for asking all those questions. Y'all were great. Yeah, we appreciate y'all.